So, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about uncertainty, as you probably know. And I think I'm going to bring to you the oldest uncertainty mankind has, which is astronomy. So, I have realized uh, when preparing this presentation that astronomy is the one certainty that I have in my life, is the one certainty that I always wanted to pursue, to understand why the universe is as it is. So I really hope that by the time you leave here today, you have lots of new uncertainties to carry with you. So I start with um, this uh, very ancient image of a person looking outside into the sphere of stars and wondering, what is out there? How big is this universe? And uh, when looking at it, I thought, oh, this is really very modern. We can continue stating something equal. We have no idea how big our universe is. So this, and, and what is out there and what we are doing here, why things are the way they are, well, we know a little bit. So I started wondering, what is time? And I read a few interesting books about it, and I, I started realizing that, in fact, we don't have a proof or evidence that time does really exist. Does it exist, or is it a figure of our imagination because we get older? So what is time? And time is different in different, in different situations, as I will tell you in a, in, a, in a few seconds. So that is something that mind-boggled me when you start understanding that time goes different to different uh, uh, people with different velocities, for instance. So what is time is something that we really don't know. Also, how come we are here? If we start studying physics, for instance, and uh, you, you, you start understanding that there are a few constants in nature, and their value is perfectly fine-tuned for us to be here. Or maybe we are here because they are the way they are. So what is it? Was it like this for us to be here, or we are here because it is like this? What if there are plenty of other universes, and in each new universe, these constants, constants have a different value, a little bit. Some of them are going to be sterile, no life. Some might have life forms that are completely different than what we know in our universe. So we don't know if there are more universes out there. Are we alone in the universe? Well, scientists believe no. In such a big universe would be such a waste of space. But in fact, we haven't found any life yet, although we know more than 4,000 planets around other stars, an amazing number, but we haven't yet found life. But that's a good explanation for that. The universe is really big. If you look to this picture of Saturn taken by the Cassini spacecraft, you see this little dot here. This is us. And guess what? You are all in that picture. It was a photograph of Earth. Can you see yourselves? I guess you can't. So even the solar system, which is our house, is so big that from Saturn, which is not a very far away planet, we cannot see Earth. So finding a planet is already difficult. We, find, we found more than 4,000, but finding life in it is even more challenging than that. So we can start considering other things. For instance, what if the moon didn't exist? Well, our moon is very important to stabilize the axis of our planet. Our planet rotates around itself, and it, its axis is a little bit inclined, uh, related to the orbit around the sun. And this uh, axis is very stable. So if the moon wasn't there, it wouldn't be that stable, and maybe life wouldn't have appeared on planet Earth yet. What if Jupiter was a little bit closer to us than what it is? Well, gravitational perturbations maybe would have uh, made it impossible for life to appear as it is on planet Earth. What if the sun was a red dwarf? Well, then, you know, we wouldn't see colors. We would see heat. So buying clothes would be very boring, like, oh, your dress is hotter than mine. You wouldn't see colors, just cold and hot. So reality would be a completely different thing to us than what we know today. What if the sun had uh, other stars, like many stars, they are in binary systems, of two stars orbiting each other, and every time one of these stars would pass close to Earth, 
the gravitational perturbations would also make it very difficult for life to have emerged as it did. So there are several characteristics that we have to consider when we speak about life in the universe. I could go on with that for a long time. But we do know a few things. And this nice illustration here is trying to tell us what we know so far. We can't say we're sure, but we have very good evidences that go in every step of what we have learned so far. So everything started with a soup of particles here. And then the first atoms, the first molecules, we go to the first stars, the first galaxies. And the first stars had their life cycle. They lived and died, and from those, new stars would appear. And these new stars would have the capability of having a rocky planet like our own. And this planet could have the uh, possibility to have life like ours. So we more or less understand how this happened to be. And this starts at a distance of 10 to minus 43 seconds, which is when the, we know we go that back in time trying to understand it, not beyond that. We also know a few other things that are completely mind-boggling to us. Einstein told us that time is relative. So take, for instance, a pair of twins, the twin paradox. If one of the twins would enter a spacecraft and travel with a very high speed through the universe, when this twin would come back, he would find his other twin on Earth older than himself. And you say, yeah, well, this is theory. Yeah, but we have kind of very good evidences, and yet this evidence is affecting almost all of our lives. If we wouldn't introduce this relativistic uh, 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 implication on GPS, they will be useless. So we do know it is like this, although we don't really understand what does it mean. Or we can talk about his vision of space-time and that uh, mass will bend light. So as a consequence, you see here, this uh, arch that you see here is uh, what happens to... So you have two massive stars here, uh, galaxies here, and behind those galaxies there is a galaxy that you can't see, but because the light is crossing this very heavy galaxies, their light is being bended. And so you see the galaxy all around here. It's none in, of, in, in none of these places, so this is not real, it doesn't exist. We also know that uh, the space-time that Einstein depicted was uh, uh, something that he said, okay, if that exists, then we should have something called gravitational waves. When I'm doing like this, I'm producing gravitational waves. So this thing that we don't know what it is has just been detected. So gravitational waves have been detected. So this thing that we don't know what it is and is all around us do exist. So this is also something that is really mind-boggling. Black holes. This is something that happened uh, to many theories across the history of physics. And people always thought, oh, no, no, this is just a mathematic uh, misunderstanding. But in fact, we are very close, very, very close, in not, if not there yet, with gravitational waves and this amazing picture to understanding that black holes are reality. They are there. We cannot avoid them. Very simple objects, the simplest object in the universe, and yet the most mysterious and uncertain one. And this amazing picture is the first good picture of a shadow of a black hole around its, it, projected in its accretion disk. It's the particles that are going very fast around the, the black hole. And this is a, a picture of the shadow of the black hole. We know for sure we exist. We know for sure that there are galaxies out there, billions of them. We know for sure that galaxies have gas and dust. We've seen it. We know for sure that there are stars out there, plenty of stars. This is a globular cluster, a very tiny thing that is here, inhabit here near the Southern Cross. And only this tiny little thing has millions of stars in it, many of them with planets, perhaps with life. We know for sure there are planets, I told you that already. And we live in this very tiny little one called Earth that we really love. It's the remaining of the formation of our star, the Sun that has 99.9% .9 of all the mass of the solar system. The beautiful planet, isn't it? The planet where we live. I love this planet, it's the most beautiful one. And if you look at it from above, you see no frontiers, you see no countries. Countries are a terrible invention that we had. So, if we are an astronaut, we can even learn more. If you look at this picture, you will see that, you know, the blue skies that we take for granted, they don't exist out there. 
is a consequence of our atmosphere. The astronaut in this picture, it's a real picture, is seeing a dark sky. There is no blue sky out there. We live in the habitable zone of our star, in a place that water can exist in liquid form, not too hot, not too cold, very good for us to be here. We also happen to live in the habitable zone of our galaxy, the place where the chemical elements are very good for us to be here. So we live in the arm of the Milky Way, the only galaxy we cannot make a picture of because we are in it and it's impossible for us to go out and make a picture. The uh, Milky Way galaxy is part of the local group a tiny group of galaxies that is part of the Virgo cluster, which is a, a bigger cluster of galaxies that in its turn is part of a bigger cluster and all of this together from the observable universe. I'm not saying here that the universe is spherical. What I'm saying here is that we can only see things according to the age of the universe, meaning if the universe is 13.7 billion years old, anything that would require more time to travel to us is not visible to us yet. We can't see. So it's like a radius around us where we can see only things that were able to reach us. We don't know what's out there. So this picture that you see here is taken from uh, this little dot here near that for Nax constellation. And uh, you can see that every single dot here is a galaxy. But these galaxies are not all at the same distance to us. So here is a piece of work of scientists showing us that we can travel through that picture to the far end of our universe. Not really to the end, but to a stage where the universe was very young. The oldest galaxy that we can see here is 13.2 billion years old. So this is a masterpiece of art that uh, required a lot of work for scientists to understand how far these galaxies are from us. Because when we look to the sky, we don't see distances, we don't know. So science is a beautiful thing that helps us understand the universe and the uncertainties around us. How they came to be, why the universe is so full of galaxies, how many other forms of life have been there. And we are seeing this in the past. We see this as it was and where it was when this picture was taken. So this picture is showing us this galaxy 13.2 billion years away from us. So it is as it was and where it was 13.2 billion years ago. So I uh, end my presentation. Uh, oops, not the movie again. <laughs> So I end my presentation with uh, this beautiful picture, which is humans, you know, and I think astronomy made me understand a little bit better what is the meaning of being human. It also made me understand a little bit better that not all of us know what it means to be human and we should take more care of that. We should take more care of understanding each other and understanding that this pale blue dot here, as Carl Sagan used to say, has no boundaries, that we are all alike. And you would be surprised how we are alike each other. And uh, I, I urge you to take the uncertainty of being alive and uh, embrace this beautiful planet where we live. This is a very nice picture uh, taken by an astronomer. It's in Bolivia. There is a, a, a south uh, plain, a very plain, a big one. And when it rains, it becomes like the most beautiful mirror, the largest mirror on planet Earth. So please enjoy this magical place every moment of your life. Thank you.